Hello everyone. Uganda National Association of the Deaf, UNAD, has been conducting a research project in collaboration with the University of Central Lancashire in the UK. It is a research project titled Peer-to-Peer -peer Deaf Multiliteracies, which involves reading and writing English, sign language, drawing, mobile applications, and a number of other research techniques. We've been implementing the project in two places, Uganda National Session of the Deaf Offices and Tinder School for the Deaf. At Ntinda School for the Deaf, the focus has been deaf children between the ages of 6 to 11 years, and at UNAD, deaf youth between the ages of 15 to 22 years. Hello, my name is Olivia. I'm a peer-to-peer -peer tutor. Before we started with the training of the children, we conducted a pretest signed as that. So during the pretest, we gave the children a test of their knowledge to know, to assess the level of their skills, as you can see from this video. As you can see from the pretest, um, most of the children were not understanding the concept we we're teaching. They didn't know what to write. So that was a basis for us to develop the lessons for teaching, depending on the area of interest for the children. So we conducted the lessons, as you can see here. That is just an example of how we develop the lesson plans. And we had a clock activity where as a peer tutor, I asked the children to explain what their daily activities are like from morning to evening, what they do all through the day. From the clock activities, then we went to other lessons uh, like the children. For instance, some children asked to do painting or coloring because that is their area of interest. So we then developed lesson plans also on coloring or painting. And then at the same time, we asked the children to indicate which colors they have used, as you can see here. The other method that we used was sentence construction for the children, where we get words, and depending on the area of interest for the children, we develop lesson plans, which we show on PowerPoint. And after the children seeing these pictures that are downloaded from the internet, we developed brief sentences. So we put aside the laptop, and then as a tutor, I explained to the children the short sentences. So after sentence construction, we also had 
activities outside the class where they can do exercises. Then uh, we also had uh, role play as a methodology where children were showcasing drama and learning at the same time. Hello, where is Jane? Jane is behind there. Jane, where are you? You're going to school. Are you ready? Yes. Hello, hello. How much does it cost to go to this place? 5,000? No, that's expensive. Hello. How much is it to this place? 1,000 shillings. Okay. Hello, good morning. Are you okay? Do you want to go to class? Please come. Come. Bye, Daddy. Bye. You're welcome to class. Do not fear or feel shy. Welcome. Good morning, class. Are you okay? Yes, we are fine, teacher. What's your name? That's my name. And what's your name? I'm okay. Jane is a very good girl. She's well mannered and has studied really so well. She's a very bright girl and she has passed. Congratulations. So for the past seven months that we've been teaching, we needed to do an assessment of how far we've gone, whether we are progressing, whether the children are actually learning well, or they are not learning anything. So we administered a post-test. Do you like sleeping? Do you like sleeping? Okay, thank you. As you have seen, after that, the lesson planning continues and the teaching continues with a focus of creative story making, uh, using books. So as a tutor, 
I sign out the stories and then I buy the books and give to the children to read the stories and then I ask the students to reproduce the stories in sign language, explaining what the story in the book is about. I just have one example of a child who was using her expressive skills in storytelling. The story is about a pig. The pig said, I am mature. So each one should go to their home. And then the pig said, yes, yes, yes. Come, let's go. So there they go and they see grass. So the pig cuts and cuts the grass. Ties the grass and the pig walks away with the grass. Along the way, the pig sees reeds. The pig pig picks and picks the pigs, the reeds, and walks away as heavy as the, the reeds are. The pig likes a clean home. So in summary, we've been using different approaches within the classroom. In the classroom, we do general teaching, and then sometimes we have to subdivide the class into groups, assign them work, or sometimes we do work in pairs for discussions. We also have individual work where each and every child does work on their own, and then we compile their work in the portfolios. This is an example of how we do the pairing in class. Short, tall. Beautiful, ugly. Young, mature. Handsome, ugly. Number 15. This is a sister, sister, these two are sisters. The other methodology we use in teaching is encouraging the children to make their own stories. The way we do it is as a teacher or a tutor, I generate an idea about a story. It could be a true life story or imaginative. So I sign the story to the children after explaining them and making sure they've understood what the story is about, I step aside and challenge the children to, to make their own stories too. Some of the children are actually very good at relating past experiences, so they sign that and each and every child is encouraged to give a story. After that, we, we share papers that have information about the exact story they talked about or a drawing about the story they told us about. It could be a sentence, it could be words that we put down in that piece of paper. And then they practice on that. And then after that, we give them books to draw and also write something about the story. The books are few, but of course, some children are very good at expressive skills and we encourage them to put as many ideas as they can about the story and practice more in English and sign language. have another methodology of teaching uh, learning through games 
The objective for this is to ensure that children are attentive and participative. So we ensure there's a lot of fun in class and they're able to learn really well. It could be a topic about look and find. Where is the book? Where are the colors? Where is the rope? After the outdoor activity, the children come back to class and uh, we pair them in groups of two, two, we encourage them to interact and share. So the teacher comes back and could sign, for instance, where is the ball? So the children will relate whatever happened outside to the classroom and then write sentences of what took place. I'll give an example of another game. For instance, if uh, we have to go to different destinations, the, teacher, the tutor encourages the children to generate ideas on areas of their interest. And then I'll tell the children, I'm going to the salon. I could pick a pen and take with me. So the children are also asked to identify a destination of their choice. They could say, I want to go to America, or I want to go to the UK, or I want to go to India. And then the children are told to pick something to go with. So after picking what they have to go with, we go in turns for, for each and every child. Then again, the children are given paper to write the sentences in English drama grammar. For instance, I am going to the USA. I am picking a ball, a pen, a toothbrush, and taking with me. So the children are encouraged to write those sentences. So it is both learning English and also role play. I'm going to Kampala. I'm going a ball, a toothbrush, shoes, a rope. I am taking with me. I am going to the United Kingdom, I am picking a rope, a duster, colors, and taking them with me. So uh, in summary, as you've noted, we have the pretest, the post-test, and the different methodologies of teaching. And each is not uh, independent. They are interrelated and depend on each other. What we call that is transdisciplinary learning. I'll give an example of as a teacher, I don't have to focus only on teaching English. I can teach them English, teach them art, storytelling and expression, encourage them to learn math or science. For science, I could give an example, for instance, where children are building a house out of mud or soil. You could take them through the different types of soil to relate to your topic and then also express themselves through storytelling. Let them come out with their ideas. Let them practice. All that is what we call transdisciplinary learning. I'm 
here to briefly talk about the importance of sign language in education. Through research and teaching, we've established that um, not very many African countries and other developing countries attach much importance to sign language in education. Yet this is part of socialization from the social point of view, we know. It's the first language that deaf children should learn and therefore must be emphasized because for the cognitive skills, for socialization, for reading, writing, learning how to speak, they need sign language education. Sign language education should be pass, part and parcel of nurturing deaf children from the earliest age possible. But what happens in most of our countries is that it is, it is, a, it is dealt with at later stages in life and sometimes totally neglected, which causes a lot of social problems in society. So we need to refocus our thinking, we need to refocus our, the way we look at sign language. The tendency to believe that it is like any other foreign or a language which can be acquired later is wrong. It is the first language of deaf children. So it should be dealt with from the start to enable them get skills, to enable them go to schools, to enable them deal with the community, deal with friends, play, um, participate in society and therefore it is not just a privilege that they will go and speak uh, the, the way some of us go and acquire other languages like French or English and something. This is their basic first language and must be treated as such. So in a nutshell, we who are doing research and doing advocacy in this area need to bring it to the attention of the policy makers that we can't say we are developing education special needs education or general education or integrative education, integrating education systems without putting the question of sign language at the forefront. Sign language is a fight, is a sign, is a fast language.